I water cooled the 6800 XT and the results were incredible. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So as many of you may know, the RX 6800 and 6800 XT are incredibly difficult to get your hands on, but fortunately a viewer of the channel, Chris Wilder, was able to send one over for me to test, which by the way, thanks a ton Chris, because without you actually sending one to me, there's no way I could have gotten my hands on one, and you're a brave soul for letting me water cool this thing, so thanks a ton, I'll be sure to get it back to you in one piece. But in any case, when I got my hands on this card, the first thing I did was I decided to start overclocking it, because to be honest with you, there's tons of reviews of the 6800 XT out there, so we don't need one more, and I was more interested in, you know, how far can we push these clocks? Because I've been seeing custom cards hit upwards of like 2.65 gigahertz. I even saw one video where it's hitting 2.7 gigahertz. So I thought, you know, let me try my hand at this. I've never really overclocked a high-end AMD GPU before. So let's see how far we can get it. And to my surprise, I was actually able to get this card over 2.7 gigahertz on air, but there was a catch. See, even though I was hitting up to 2.7 gigahertz, it actually wasn't scaling. In fact, it was actually reducing my scores. So when I ran Time Spy Extreme, I was running, you know, I think I got about 8,000 points stock and then when I got up to 2.7 gigahertz it dropped to like 7,800 points so clearly I was pushing the clock speeds just a little bit too high and I was trying to figure out is there a way I can stabilize this so I was going through I was increasing the power limit that didn't really seem to help anything I was messing around with the voltages it helped a little bit but not too much and then finally I decided hey it's time to kick things up a notch and try and water cool this bad boy because I had an NZXT Kraken X62 just laying around which is a 280 millimeter water cooler and it's one of the best ones out there on the market Market. And, you know, I was like, I could sell this thing or I could put it in another PC. But you know what? I think it would fit perfectly on this RX 6800 XT. So I decided to go ahead and take the shroud off of this thing, which, by the way, this is a big, heavy shroud. It's actually pretty good. The one thing I don't like about this shroud here is that uh, you can see there's a thermal pad on the other side. But unfortunately, as you can see here, when I took this cooler off, the actual thermal pad piece here ripped a little bit. So it looks like there's no going back now. But, you know, I think that's one of the big reasons as to why this cooler isn't quite as effective as it could be. So it's a little unfortunate fortunate to see that they decided to go with a thermal pad because you know even though it's a very high quality thermal pad unfortunately when you use a thermal pad at all it just reduces the effectiveness of the cooler it just can't quite you know transfer as much heat as thermal paste that's just how it is so you know you could potentially maybe even take this thing off and replace it with thermal paste but I decided to go all the way and try and mount a whole 280 millimeter AIO liquid cooler to this thing and I wanted to do it in a way that could potentially be reproduced by a lot of people so instead of making my own bracket like I did with my girlfriend's GTX 1070, I decided to use a Kraken G12 mounting kit because, you know, this thing is only going to take a little bit of modification that I think most people could do so that if you are interested in water cooling your own GPU, which, you know, I don't really recommend you do because it is a little bit risky, but if you're willing to take the risk of, you know, potentially damaging your components and you know what you're doing, uh, I think this is probably the best way to go because it's only like 25 bucks and again, a little bit of modification and it works just fine. But again, I pulled the whole thing apart and then I started sliding the screws through, which by the way, I got them just over at home. Depot. I believe they're called M3 by 35 millimeter. You could probably even get them a little bit shorter. You probably get like 25 millimeter as long as it's able to not only go through the PCB, but also go through the Kraken on the other side so that you can take a nut and screw it down. That's all it needs to do. You could even get them to be a little bit smaller if you want. It just needs to be able to fit through. Um, but when I went and put those through, the only thing I noticed was that the Kraken G12, the screw holes were a little bit too far apart. So I had to take a Dremel and, you know, get them a little bit closer together. It didn't take a whole lot of work whatsoever. And then it fit absolutely perfectly so yeah you can't necessarily use the mounting kit entirely inside there you do need to pick up a little bit of screws so if you're not comfortable with that totally understand but I, I was and then I used some uh, cryonaut thermal grizzly thermal paste and that's supposed to be one of the best thermal paste on the market and I used that and I got some thermal pads I believe from arctic as well to put over the memory and then I put some little tiny like metal heat sinks on there that also touch the crack in g12 to not only hold it down but potentially offer a little bit better cool Cooling performance so that should be enough cooling for both the VRMs as well as the memory hopefully and then you know just getting a little extra airflow on these cards when you do some custom water cooling is always a good idea but in any case I went ahead and I put it back in my system and it was looking really good and when I first booted up my system the temperatures were actually really good they were only about 20 degrees Celsius and just this morning when I turned my PC on at the desktop it was only 18 degrees Celsius and then when I'm playing my games it's actually I, I believe in like Apex Legends it's around 34 degrees Celsius 
see us on average. It, it goes up a little bit, it goes down a little bit, and that's actually really, really good for the temperature because I think that's down from around 65 degrees Celsius, which, you know, that's already pretty good, but to get over a 20 degrees Celsius drop in the average temperature is a really huge improvement, and it allowed me to boost my clocks higher. So the first thing I did after installing the new water-cooled card, of course, was go back to overclocking, and this time I saw much better scaling out of the clock speeds that I put in there. So, you know, instead of last time where I was getting a score reduction when he was hitting over 2.6 to 2.7 gigahertz, this time when I set my minimum clock to about, I, uh, I started with 2300 and I eventually worked my way up to 2450 megahertz, and then my maximum clock to 2800 megahertz, in the absolute heaviest of loads, it would drop to about 2400 to 2450 megahertz on the core clock. And then when it had, you know, a little bit of extra power headroom, it would go all the way up to 2.6 to 2.7 something gigahertz. And then when I was playing Apex Legends, it actually was able to hit over 2.7 gigahertz. I think I saw as high as 2.77 gigahertz. But again, I was able to dial in 2.8 gigahertz for my max boost clock, which is absolutely incredible. And it actually started to scale with it. So my score started increasing quite a bit. And my overall score compared to the stock ended up being about 10% faster, which is, again, a very impressive result. And that actually puts it about on par with an RTX 3090 roughly. Now the 3090 might be a little bit faster, but again, you're talking about a $650 card, which for me, the total cost was really, really low because all I did was buy, I believe like eight or $10 worth of screws as well as a $25 mounting kit. So about 35 bucks and I had a water cooler sitting around. So I guess the total cost comes to, you know, close to $700, but you're talking about a $700 card versus a $1,500 card and they're roughly in the same ballpark. I mean, this should be certainly faster than an RTX 3080 and it goes to show you that the RX 6800 and 6800 XT do have quite a bit of overclocking headroom. And I think I could actually get a little bit more if it wasn't so power limited. And on top of that, there's a strange 2.8 gigahertz limit, which, you know, with the best cards, you can potentially shoot higher than 2.8 gigahertz if they would just unlock it. And I'm just, I'm not willing to take someone else's card and BIOS flash it right now. I'm not going to do that, but it looks like other people are running across the same issue where if you have a really good card, you could potentially even push it higher than 2.8 gigahertz for its max boost clock. But unfortunately, AMD's just locked that off. And on top of that, with the power limit thing, you know, even though I'm able to give it a plus 15%, I'm not sure if it's actually doing anything. It seems like it's reporting around 300 watts still. So whether or not the 15% does anything, I have no idea. It definitely seems to be power limited because when I took my voltage down from 1.15 volts to 1.05 volts, that actually increased my scores. I was able to get the clock speeds more stable. So overall, you know, this is very impressive. I think it's, it is worth it to water cool these cards if you are interested in doing that. Of course, there's always a risk. If you tighten it too hard, you could potentially crack the die. If you don't tighten it enough, you could be, you know, making really poor contact. You could yeah, accidentally be sawing something and totally screw something up. You could drop something on the die. There's a lot of risk involved, but if you're willing to take those risks, Actually, the return on investment's pretty decent, especially if you have a water cooler already sitting around. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the 6800XT and its overclocking capabilities? Are you impressed or are you wishing for a little bit better scaling? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you wanna see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.